Hello, welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This time around I'm going to show you progress with my tilting Velomobile project. This is the prototype here and the reason I'm making a prototype is just to check whether the tilting mechanism does actually perform as expected. As you can see I'm making the prototype out of wood. Uh, the reason I'm making it from wood is because uh, I had a lot of wood in stock so it's not really costing me anything for the materials. Um, also I'm reasonably good at woodwork so it seemed like the obvious thing to do. I think it's important to make a prototype rather than commit fully to a production version of the real thing because that can get very expensive and until I know that it actually works as intended uh, it might all be a complete waste of time. So in this video I'm going to show you how I've done the woodwork on this. Uh, the next video I'll look a little bit more closely at some of the fixtures and fittings around the tilting mechanism um, and then beyond that, uh, who knows, we'll see where the project goes after that. So this is what it's looking like so far. I've finished most of the woodwork and um, still got a bit of finishing off to do. Um, you know, sanding, smoothing off the sharp corners, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm mostly at the point where I'm starting to work on some of the fixtures and fittings. So I need to put the wheels on the front, put the seat in, um, obviously install the uh, pedals, the chain, the drivetrain, all that sort of stuff. This is the riding position. It's pretty uncomfortable at the moment because there's no seat but the feet are going to be up here. There'll be a seat so I'll be leaning back around here. So quite a lot of weight over the rear wheel, quite a rearward weight distribution. And the handlebars are going to be down by the sides of my legs here, not up in the middle like that. Ooh, this is really uncomfortable. The tilting arms are made of 15mm birch ply. The main frame, I don't know what you call it, in the middle. This is two layers of 15mm ply, so 30mm in total. We've got this stiffening strip down here, which is two layers of 6mm ply, I think. The bottom bracket's going to be mounted on here. Uh, and moving towards the rear section, this is uh, a box section. So this is like the thinnest point here, but also potentially the highest stress point. So I've built a fairly substantial box section. And moving to the back, uh, we've got the seat stay, chain stay, I guess you'd call it, made of laminated, bent, birch plywood. This is just a reminder of to what I'm trying to achieve. So this is a simple CAD model of the Velomobile. Now let's get down to work. So I'm now marking out the outline for the suspension arms on a piece of 15 millimeter birch plywood. And this is what the pencil marks look like. The next job is to cut out the pieces using a jigsaw. This is a circular saw just roughing out the parts. I think it would be better if the cable was behind me rather than in front of me. It always looks like I'm about to cut through the cable. This is the top suspension arm or tilting arm coming to shape. These are the two bottom pieces. You can't see one of them, it's hidden under the top piece. So now I've mounted the pieces in the workmate and I'm roughing the shape down with the sander just to get a reasonably nice finish. Uh, once I get a bit further into the build, I'll probably streamline the shapes to give them a bit more of an aerofoil section for aerodynamics. Now I'm starting to mark out some of the pieces for the body. These bits are relatively thin 6mm birch ply and these will form part of the sheathing for the rear section of the body, so the box section leading up to the, um, the seat stays and the chain stays. Using my trusty Black & Decker jigsaw. This is now the front section of the frame or the body. This is 15mm ply so it's quite thick. And in fact, there's going to be two layers of this. So this is the first layer now. And 
I just realized I shouldn't have cut that triangular piece off, but it's too late, I'll have to glue it back on. So this is the body starting to come together. I've had to make it in sections rather than from one piece because that's just the size of the wood that I had left over. Ideally, of course, it would be in one piece. I'm now marking the shape of the first half of the body onto the second half. Now this is the mounting plates for the pivots for the tilting arms. These will slot on at the front and they'll be glued on using wood glue. Now drilling through the mounting points so that I can fit the bearings for the bushes. I'm going to be using plain bearings for this prototype. So I'm drilling a pilot hole through and down uh, and then drilling through, I think it was 13 millimetres if I remember rightly. Plain bearings will be araldited into these holes. So that's what the bottom mounting bracket looks like. I've now improvised a sanding table using my trusty belt sander, just to try and get a reasonably smooth finish on these pieces. And this is what the pivot mounting points look like here. I've now glued them onto the body using Bostic exterior grade wood glue. And I'm now cutting away the surplus bit of the lower mounting points using a tenon saw. These are currently just glued on but I'm going to be running a Jubilee clip around them to strap them into place more securely because I don't trust the glue smoothing things off with my belt sander. Now I'm cutting some lightning holes in the rear section of the central spine. Using a spade drill to create the radiuses and now cutting away the waste with my jigsaw. I probably could have cut away quite a bit more actually because there's a fair bit of unnecessary weight here and most of the strength is provided by the box section but it's not intended to be a racing machine at this point it's just a prototype so I wasn't too worried about it. Now I'm sticking the edging strips on just to provide a bit more strength and some finish so these are laminated from two layers of six mil ply that's the first layer gone on now now the second layer clamping everything in place while the glue sets and these pieces are screwed down as well temporarily. The screws will come out and the holes will be filled with wood filler. A bit more sanding to get the shape I want. So this is what things are looking like at this point and what I need to do is to sand down the rough edges of the edging strips to get a nice smooth finish. This is the belt sander again, sanding the edges of those strips. I'm now cutting out the pieces that are going to form the rear section of the frame. Uh, namely the, the seat stays or the chain stays, kind of one piece. So because of the curvature of these pieces when looked at from the top view, I'm going to be laminating them from two thicknesses of 6mm ply glued together. And the inner layer, I've cut out this central section to save as much weight as I can.
Now I'm going to cut out this sort of oval shape from the centre of the body to try and save a bit of weight. I don't think that piece of wood is providing much to contribute to the strength, but it's certainly adding a kilogram or two of unwanted weight, so it's got to go. So this is 30 millimetres thick, a bit of a heavy job for my jigsaw, but it got there in the end. So now back to the seat stays, applying a generous layer of glue, then sticking them down and holding them in the bending jig. So this is a piece of wood screwed down to my bench. It will hold that bit flat, a bit of an iron bar as well to hold things together. Now I've bent the pieces up and clamping them down onto a handily sized piece of aluminium bar that I had that just happened to be exactly the right size. Making sure everything's clamped nicely together so that there's no gaps between the inner and the outer layers of the lamination. And now that that's sat there it needs to be left for about 24 hours for the glue to set good and hard before dismantling the jig. It does create quite a nice curved shape. Here we go, so now the glue's dried, taking off the clamps, releasing the strap, and hopefully it will all hold its shape. As it comes. There we go, so that's been quite successful. Obviously this is the left hand seat stay, chain stay and I will have to be making the right hand piece, which is what I'm doing now. So that's now finished, the right hand piece is finished. So I've got a left and a right. And this is roughly what they're going to look like when they're stuck together onto the main frame. So a nice curvature, leaving a gap of 135 millimeters, which is the standard axle width for a rear wheel. So now really the final main job on the body is sticking those seat stay pieces onto the central spine. So another decent layer of glue holding things down with a iron bar and clamping things together while the glue sets. It's really important that the frame is completely flat at this point because if it's twisted it will be permanently twisted once the glue's dried. That's the right hand side done, turning it over and doing exactly the same thing on the left hand side. Plenty of glue. edges are chamfered pretty much all round on the body so I'm using my router to provide that 45 degree bevel or chamfer. Now I made a little drum sander to go in the electric drill to sand smooth the inner surface of that cutout. And this is what the frame looks like at this point. A little bit of filling to do to fill up that gap but coming together quite nicely. So there you go, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye.